Hey, what is up guys? My name is True Underdog, here with a guide on how to play Jury. This guide will cover her normal attacks, special moves, unique attacks, V-System, and her critical art. So without further ado, let's break her down step by step. Now first off, we have her normal attacks. I'm gonna start off with the punches, then the kicks, and then the best jumping attacks. Okay, so first off, we have Standing Light Punch. This attack has amazing range and has 3 frames startup, meaning it's your go-to move for punishing most attacks. Since it's so dang fast, look at this dang thing, it's crazy. Not to mention it has fantastic range too, especially for a light attack. Now the Crouching Light Punch isn't quite as fast, but still has amazing range. Pretty dang good stuff. Also, keep in mind that both Standing Light Punch and Crouching Light Punch are both plus on block. Next up we have Medium Punch. Medium Punch also has some pretty dang good range, and starts up in 5 frames, so it's pretty darn fast. Not to mention, it's plus on block, making it a very good tool. It also links into Standing Light Kick pretty easily. Now Crouching Medium Punch has very, very good range, and cancels into a lot of moves that are essential for ending combos. Not to mention, it's also safe on block, so it's honestly one of Jury's best normals in my opinion. And next we have Heavy Punch. Standing Heavy Punch has great range, and does good damage as well. However, it will whiff on crouching opponents, so keep that in mind. You can't just throw it out willy-nilly. Now at the same time, it's essential for extending combos with Jury, because it has very good hits done. Crouching Heavy Punch is Jury's go-to anti-air. Now it's not as godlike as it was in Street Fighter 4, but it's still pretty dang good in combat. And even though it is unsafe if blocked, it's still a great way to start off combos if you find the opening. Plus, it also causes a crush on counter hit, allowing for some dangerous combos. That's it for all the punches, so now it's time for the kicks. First off, we have Standing Light Kick. This attack has pretty good range, and combos into itself as well as Standing Light Punch, so it's a pretty good tool, got some decent range, and it's safe on block. Pretty good utility. Not as fast as Standing Light Punch, but still pretty dang fast. The crouching version hits low, and has pretty decent range as well. It also links into Standing Light Punch, which makes it very easy to hit low combos with Jury. Which is great seeing as how she does have an overhead, but we're going to talk about that later. Standing Medium Kick has great range, but is unsafe on block if you don't space it properly. Now on the flip side, if it is done up close and manages to hit, it hits twice for some extra damage, which is some pretty good stuff. Whereas Crouching Medium Kick is great because of its range, and does pretty decent damage. However, it does not have the same hits done as Crouching Medium Punch, so it can't combo into certain attacks. So it's not really good for hits done, it's more of a footsie tool. Just low check your opponent every now and then from a pretty good distance away. That's honestly its main utility. And last but not least we have the Heavy Kicks. Standing Heavy Kick has great range and does great damage. However, I'm not sure if it's off the ground like it was in Street Fighter 4. I can't find any frame data or guide data to back that up. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not actually airborne, it just looks like it. So keep that in mind. It may be possible for Jury to be thrown and hit with low attacks during this move. Whereas in Street Fighter 4, that was not the case. However, it does cause a crush on counter hit, which is pretty dang amazing. It does some pretty good damage, and can lead into big combos as well. Crouching Heavy Kick has decent range, and causes a knockdown on hit. On counter hit, it causes a hard knockdown, which is a great time to store some fireballs. However, it is very unsafe on block, so keep that in mind. Do not do it willy-nilly, use it with responsibility. Alright, so next up we have the jump ins. So Jumping Light Kick is a decent cross-up, and has a pretty good hitbox. However, not very much hit stun, so comboing after it will be difficult. With that said, it's great for tick throw setups. Jumping Medium Kick is a much better cross-up tool, and it's also good on neutral as well. Which is why I recommend it a lot more than Jumping Light Kick, it just has more hit stun. Jumping Heavy Kick has decent range, and does really good damage. Just keep in mind if you cross up by accident, you're gonna whiff completely which is why I prefer Jumping Medium Kick in almost every situation. Jumping Medium Punch has good range and is a great air-to-air, -air, because when you do manage to hit the opponent, you can follow it up with her EX Pinwheel for some pretty big damage. Or you can use some other attacks in her arsenal to do even more damage. Okay, that's it for her normal attacks. So let's move on to her unique attacks. First up, we have Karinzon. This attack hits twice when close enough, and is safe on block as well, which makes it a great hit confirm for Jury's V-Trigger. 
it can also be followed up with Standing Light Punch for a pretty good combo. It also has a pretty dang good hitbox as well, so keep that in mind. It's honestly just a really good move in general. Next we have Senkaikyaku, and I'm probably not saying that correctly. However, the point is, it's an overhead. Pretty standard overhead too, however it has amazing range and is minus 4 on block. So if you space it properly, most characters actually can't punish you even if they do manage to block it. Next up is Kyo Retsushu. This target combo can actually whiff on crouching opponents, so it's a pretty big risk. However, if you do manage to land it, it's great for a lot of reasons. It allows you to store an attack and still end the combo with a light pinwheel, which is very useful in combat. If you don't want to end the combo, you can just store two attacks instead. And at the very least, it's good for damage, especially after a crush counter. And last but not least, we have Inkushu. While it may look like it, don't be fooled, this attack is actually not a double overhead. However, it does do good damage and is a great air-to-air -air as well. It's also a decent way to end certain combos during V-Trigger, but more on that later. Last but not least, do not forget about Jury's Air Throw. Not only does it do good damage, but it also trains your opponent to stay on the ground where you can do better combos on them. So that about does it for her unique attacks, so let's move on to her special moves. First on our list we have Tensenrin, otherwise known as Pinwheel. Unlike in Street Fighter 4, this attack is no longer down back and kick. Instead, it's a Dragon Punch then kick, otherwise known as a Z motion. Basically it's forward, then down forward, then kick, like this. Now the light version is only minus 3 on block, so your opponent needs frame perfect timing in order to punish it. With that being said, it is still a potential risk. I recommend to never use it raw, and instead only use it for ending combos. Now the medium version is upper body invincible, which makes it a pretty good anti-air. With that being said, it's not a guaranteed win, so be careful how you use it. It's also very unsafe on block, and can even be crush countered afterwards, since it is technically invincible at some point. With that being said, it does do more damage than the light version, so it's a pretty good way to end certain combos. The heavy version does the most damage, but doesn't have any invincibility, so it's best used for ending combos, whereas the medium version is your anti-air, and the light version is a more safe option. Just like the medium version, the heavy version is very unsafe if blocked. The EX version is fully invincible on startup and does the most damage. With that being said, it's also the most unsafe and can be crush counter comboed for some really big damage if your opponent does block it. So make sure to use this one responsibly. It's a very high risk, high reward kind of move. Next we have Royo Densatsu. Now despite how this move looks, it's actually not an overhead and all three versions are unsafe on block. With that being said, all three versions are great for punishing projectiles if timed properly. The light version has the least range, but starts up the fastest, which makes it a great way to end combos, especially after crouching medium punch. The medium version has better range and does more damage. It's also a bit easier to hop over fireballs with it. The heavy version has the best range and does the most damage. The EX version does less damage, but can be comboed afterwards, so it more than makes up for it. If you want even more damage, go ahead and use it mid-combo. That's 300 damage for a single bar. Pretty crazy stuff. Last on our list, but certainly not least, is Fuhara Renkyaku. Now on their first use, all three versions do minor damage, but are minus 2 on block. So while they do the same damage as a jab, they're a very safe option on block. Also keep in mind that all three versions absorb fireballs as well. Now what makes this move interesting and complicated is that each time you use the attack, it stores a new move. For example, the light version stores a projectile. It's pretty slow moving, but does good damage and is minus one on block, so it's a great pressure tool. Whereas the medium version stores an attack that's great for extending combos, however it's minus six on block and can be interrupted as well since it has pretty long startup. With that being said, it's essential for extending combos. The heavy version stores a forward kicking attack that does pretty good damage and is a great way to end combos. However, it is unsafe on block, so if your opponent blocks it, you can try and save yourself with the projectile, but keep in mind the opponent can interrupt it. The same can also be said for the medium version. The projectile will keep you safe if the opponent does manage to block it. Now the EX attack does great damage and is also safe on block. Not to mention it can even absorb projectiles during the middle of the animation. However, it's not projectile invincible on startup, so it's not really good on reaction. You can even combo into the EX version after the regular version, like this. So not only did you store an attack, 
but you also landed some pretty serious damage. That's it for her special moves, so let's go ahead and move on to her V system. Jury's V skill does good damage and crosses the opponent up, which is pretty dang sneaky. With that being said though, it's very unsafe if the opponent does manage to block it, so make sure to use it wisely. However, what makes this V skill even more deadly is that you can hold it down. This has it travel further, do more damage, and build more V gauge. And to make matters even better, you can actually forward dash and back dash out of it to cancel it. Once you see a small ring beneath Jury's feet, that's when it's time to cancel it, because it actually stored the attack, which means during a combo, you get the full version. Which is pretty crazy stuff. Last but not least, Jury's V skill is actually throw invulnerable and projectile invincible at a certain point during the animation. It's pretty much right before it crosses up the opponent. That's where it becomes invincible to both throws and projectiles. However, the fully charged version has a much bigger window of invincibility, making it very practical even from full screen. On top of looking very flashy, Jury's V reversal also puts some good space between her and the opponent, allowing her plenty of time to store up more attacks. In my honest opinion, it's one of the best V reversals in the game, especially for a character like Jury. Last but not least, we have Jury's V trigger. This V trigger does three really big things. The first is that all of her normal attacks can now be chained together allowing for some pretty deadly combos. On top of that, she no longer needs to store any attacks, making her very deadly on the battlefield, and allowing her to be a lot more aggressive as well. It also increases the range of her forward dash, and makes her target combo jump cancelable. And since her air attacks can also be chained into each other, her air combos can get pretty crazy. That's it for her V system, so now it's time for her critical art. This critical art is invincible for its entire startup, and does some pretty dang good damage as well, especially during a short combo. With that being said, it's very unsafe if blocked, and the opponent can actually jump over it if they time it correctly, both of which leave Jury very vulnerable and open to a full combo. So if you want my advice, make sure to only combo into this attack, otherwise you're just asking for trouble. Alrighty dogs, that concludes the guide. I really hope you enjoyed it. I don't have an official combo guide ready just yet, but I do have a basic combo guide, and an expert combo guide as well, so please click one of those if you want more combos with Jury. Once I have a full legit combo guide uploaded, I'll make sure to leave a link to that on screen as well. Until then, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And while you're down there, go ahead and post a comment too. Tell me what you think. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos, because we have content on this channel every single week. It's never a dull moment on Underdog Gaming. So make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.